Hello and welcome to the glorious surroundings of the Red Bull Ring in Austria. We mark the midway point of TCR Europe 2019 this weekend. Rounds seven and eight of 14, round seven today, round eight tomorrow. And I guarantee we're in for some excitement. If you were with us five weekends ago for the previous round at Spa Francorchamps, you'll have seen incidents and accidents aplenty. Uh, plenty to tell you about in the warm up to this seventh round of TCR Europe and also to tell you of uh, a couple of cars that are missing uh, from the entry list. Headlines, though, grabbed by that man, Luca Filippi, in the Hyundai i30N. He will start this first race of the weekend from pole. And if you saw the entry list earlier in the week that was posted online, uh, one uh, missing driver to tell you about, uh, Marie Bo Coppens, originally uh, entered and uh, withdrawn. So of the 30 cars we were expecting, 29 will make the start and all 29 i'm pleased to say making it round onto the grid ahead of this first race of the weekend wherever you are in the world you're very welcome to the red bull ring this is mark james in the commentary box today and tomorrow well what can i tell you compared to spa a few weekends ago no lilu wadu unfortunately big accident at the end of race one you'll recall uh, abdullah ali al khalifi involved in that incident he's not here either hopefully we'll see them back later in the year i know lilu is running a crowdfunding campaign to repair the car which was destroyed pretty much after that incident so we send our best wishes to her i'm sure she's watching the race and uh, fingers crossed we'll see her later in the year also returning alex morgan we'll see him very shortly alex morgan started the season in the renault megan and having switched to a cupra and uh, having qualified eighth. So I know there are issues with the Megane. I think from talking to Alex and his dad, it revolves around suspension. And so rather than disappoint their sponsors, they've elected to switch from the Megane to the Cupra. Uh, the Cupra with which Mike Halder incidentally finished second in TCR Germany two seasons ago. And fingers crossed we'll see quite a bit of Alex as the weekend goes on. But the headlines grabbed so far then by Hyundai, one, two, three for Hyundai. Fourth on the grid is that man, David Kajaya. Always a crowd pleaser, and his season took a little while to get going. Disappointment in Spa when he took ages to get off the grid, you may recall. And so David Kajaya looking for a good result here in Austria. All three British drivers in the top ten. Dan Lloyd, quickest in both free practice sessions yesterday. The reigning TCR UK champion, there he is in the Brutal Fish Racing Honda Civic. Uh, he lines up fifth on the grid on row three. Alongside Dan Lloyd will be the Volkswagen Golf of Maxime Potty. Now, we did think at one stage that we'd have a slight delay to proceedings. There is Potty in the WRT Golf. And there behind him, I mentioned Alex Morgan earlier on in the predominantly white Cupra. Thanks to his dad, they've now got Dayglow wing mirrors, so I've got a fighting chance of picking Alex out. But uh, the same colored wing mirrors as Stian Paulsen. It's going to get messy, I think, particularly in the run-up to turn one. That right-hander at the top of the start-finish straight, the climb up to turn one, which we'll show you in a second. There is Luca Engstler. I asked him yesterday whether he liked it here at the Red Bull Ring, and he said, well, actually, I've only ever finished fourth as my best result here. So really unfinished business, and fingers crossed I can get a good result. But uh, he had two laps disallowed in qualifying earlier on today because of track limits. Only two places on the circuit where track limits are being observed, and they are being observed very strictly this weekend. So turn one, and whichever way you look at the track map, whether you have either 10 corners or nine, as I do on mine, uh, the other track limits observation is turn eight, turn nine, whichever you prefer, the last but one corner on the circuit. Very quick right-hander, and it's the exit in that corner and the exit of turn one where the judges of fact are based. But as I was saying a moment ago, we half thought we might get a delay. One of the previous sessions was stopped and then restarted, which has uh, bumped things down a little bit. So we may be a minute or two late getting underway. There is Tom Coronel. He will start race two tomorrow from pole. 
So bets are on, I think, Tom potentially picking up a win. Here's first victory of the season, potentially. And the first of the big losers, if you like, who made it through to Q2 but didn't get into the top 10. Winner of race one in Spa, Gilles Magnus, having led the Drivers' Championship earlier in the year. Gilles Magnus, P11. And so that's where he will start alongside Matto Homola for both of this weekend's races. There is Matto Homola. Only two target competition Hyundai i30 ends making it through to Q2. Josh Files, we saw earlier, P2 on the grid. And he was telling me that if he'd strung all his best sectors together, he would have been on pole. But motor racing's not like that. And so Josh will start alongside Luca Filippi. So Hyundai first, second, and third on the grid with Nelson Ponciatisi, P3 alongside Kajaya. There is Dusan Borkovic. He will start on the seventh row of the grid. And uh, if you are looking at the results online and you're wondering where is Santiago Urrutia, he qualified P13, but if you'll cast your minds back to Spa, he received a time penalty and a grid penalty for an incident in race two. And so Santiago Urrutia, I know we have fans watching in Uruguay. Urrutia will start from P18 on the grid. Ah, there's a gap on the grid. Car 25 is missing. Natan Biel and talking to Ivan Muller's team, M Racing, earlier. Natan Biel in the Peugeot having all sorts of steering problems. They've changed the steering rack. I think they're on something like the third new steering rack in that car this weekend. And whatever the cause of the issue, they can't solve it, even with the help of Peugeot Sports engineers who are here. And so that's a disappointment. So 28 of the 29 cars line up on the grid as they head down onto their green flag lap. Let's just take a look into the pit lane. And I was half hoping that BL would be at the pit exit, and no indeed. So 28 cars will take the start. Luca Filippi on pole, Josh Files alongside him. Row two is Poncia TC and Kajaya. Row three, Lloyd and Potty. Engstler and Morgan on row four. Morbidelli, Gianni Morbidelli and Tom Coronel, row five. That'll be the front row tomorrow. Gilles Magnus and Matto Homola, row six. Dusan Borkovic, Andreas Beckman, row seven. Row eight is John Filippi in the Renault and Danny Naj. Julien Brichet alongside Santiago Urrutia, row nine. Row ten is Stian Paulsen and Tamash Tenka. Aurelien Comte and, uh, well, should have been Nathan Biel on row 11. Row 12, Jessica Beckman and Teddy Claret. Jimmy Claret and uh, Victor Davidovsky on row 13. Row 14, Martin Reba and Oli Kangas and Gilles Colombani returning to the championship. The oldest man on the grid, I'm hoping he won't mind me saying, right at the back of the grid in car 66. Gilles Col Colombani in the Team Claret Sport Peugeot. Julien Brichet, I was going to say after the big accident, there is the situation at the head of the driver's table. Brichet leads currently with 147 points after those three reversed grid victories. Race two, so far this season, has been Julien Brichet's. He's won three times so far. I think it's fair to say that it's very unlikely he's going to do that here this weekend. Big accident in Spa, the car rebuilt, and since Spa, they've given it a new colour scheme as well, all blue now. But uh, the team and target competition having worked through the night in JSB, uh, competition's case, and throughout the day in target competitions to repair Julien Brichet's and Josh Files' cars after their big accidents in Spa. And so unless Brichet can work a miracle from 17th on the grid in race two. Then uh, we have broken, potentially, that run of Brichet victories in race two. So then, Luca Filippi in the BRC Hyundai i30N. Delighted to be on pole. It all came together, and he was saying earlier on that this is the one circuit where he tested on during the winter, and that's given him so much more confidence. And so, what will happen? 
Josh Files likes it here at Red Bull Ring, to put it mildly. We were expecting this weekend to be a benefit for the Audis and the Hondas, but that's not been the case, certainly in qualifying. Dan Lloyd taking the honours in both uh, free practice sessions, but it's Hyundai that's very much dominated qualifying. And so you can sense the tension in the pit lane. And indeed, a moment or two late, but uh, certainly not the delay that we thought. So thanks to the marshals and also to the officials here at the Red Bull Ring for getting us back on track. Martin Reber towards the back of the grid on row 14 takes his position. And so we watch then for the marshal. Moments away then for round seven of TCR Europe 2019. And immediately the lights start to go on. The revs rise. Watch that front row. The lights, the lights go out. Watch Josh Files. He was saying that this is his chance to get back after the disappointment of Spa. They drag race up the hill. Files has the line. Takes the right-hander. And let's watch as they go through turn one. And was that Paulson running wide and having a problem? It looked like Stian Paulson. We'll have a look at the start in a moment, but it's Josh Files who leads around turn two. Oh, it's one of the, it's Maxime Potty getting sideways, having been tapped in the Volkswagen, but he gets away with it and keeps going. And the start that Josh Files wanted. Files then leads from Filippi, from Ponciatisi, from Dan Lloyd, from Kajaya, from Engstler. And Alex Morgan in the thick of things, as that is Julian Brichet getting muscled out onto the gravel. Twenty-three minutes plus one lap, the standard format of TCR Europe this year. And already an incident under investigation. Twenty-seven and thirty-four under investigation. Twenty-seven is John Filippi, thirty-four is Stian Paulsen. So indeed it was Paulsen, as I thought, coming off worst in that uh, turn one incident. But. Josh Files then leads from Luca Filippi, from Nelson Ponciatisi, from Dan Lloyd, David Kajaya, Luca Engstler. As Dan Lloyd just takes a little look up the inside of Ponciatisi, no indeed. Same for Luca Engstler in P6, Potty P7, Borkovic P8, Coronel P9. That was one of the West Coast cars, I think, muscle out. Arutia alongside Magnus. 14th, 15th currently, down at the bottom end of the points. And Kajaya kicking up some carbon fiber debris. Kajaya then takes P5 away from Luca Engstler. That's the head of the field. Josh Files already starting to open up a little gap from Luca Filippi. Poncio TC third, Dan Lloyd fourth, David Kajaya fifth, Luca Engstler sixth. Then it's Potty. Ah, that is potentially the result of the contact with Stian Paulsen. We haven't seen Paulsen since, whether he's still parked up on track or whether he's managed to limp round to the pits. Oh, Jill Magnus gets it very loose. As he runs wide through there. And Magnus of Urrutia, you'll recall, that was the incident at Spa where Urrutia got the penalty. There is Santiago Urrutia, and Julian Brichet pulls up. Disappointment for him. So we will have a new points leader at the end of this race, which marks the halfway point in the season. On the side of your screen there, you see lots of position changes. Kajaya past Engstler. Morgan up to 12th past Naj. And Lloyd all over the back of Pontiatisi. Kajaya and Engstler, I think, is a battle that will continue. Indeed, as Engstler tries to have a look around the outside. And you can get an idea of the change in elevation here at the Red Bull Ring, looking down from turn two. And let's take a look at the, the start again. A 
dreadful start from Colobani right at the back of the field. Now, what can we see of this incident involving Stian Paulsen, potentially? There is Paulsen in the middle of your screen. And indeed, we just got away from it a moment too soon. Again, looking at the midfield, and you can just see Paulsen. Now, this is the incident. Take a look at the back of the shot. And indeed, yes, there you can see the contact between John Filippi in the Renault and Stian Paulsen. That was where Brichet ran wide. And I'm seeing on my timing screen that we have a safety car as Jean Philippe we see on the replay heading back to the pits. And this was turn three. Ah, Aurelien Comte, Martin Reber, and Urrutia. And that's one of the Beckmans. That's Jessica, car 26. So that's at turn three. We didn't see it live but that's the situation and why we have a safety car. There is the safety car waiting to pick up the leader, and that was the incident a few moments ago at, uh, well, turn two, turn three, depending on your track map. On my track map, it's turn two. It's the right-hander at the top of the hill. Several cars then eliminated as Natan Biel makes his way out. They've sorted out the steering, thankfully, so... Teddy Claret, one of the, the victims of that incident. And as he walks back, you can see at the back, Reba's car getting recovered. And Aurelien Comte also sidelined. So, disappointment for Peugeot then. Two of their cars sidelined in that incident. As we just take a brief look at the standings, there's a safety car, leads the field past two, three, four, five cars that I can see, plus Claire's car, which we can't. So six cars at least taken out in that incident. Josh Files leads round seven of TCR Europe here at the Red Bull ring. Luca Filippi started from pole, currently P2. Nelson Ponciar TC third. Dan Lloyd fourth. David Kajaya fifth. Luca Engstler sixth. Maxime Potti seventh. Dusan Borkovic eighth. Tom Coronel ninth. Matto Homola tenth. Alex Morgan 11th, Gianni Morbidelli 12th, Danny Nagy 13th, Jill Magnus 14th, and Andreas Beckman 15th. Those are the points positions at the moment. And just looking down the timing screen, Urrutia, Comte, Reba, Jessica Beckman, Teddy Claret, Davidovsky also involved in that incident. This is looking up now. You can just about see the incident. We'll slow-mo it again. And indeed, a fairly hefty thump from Filippi. And the incident, unsurprisingly, that has sidelined so many cars is under investigation. 26, Jessica. 17, Martin Reba. 55, which is Santiago Urrutia. And 111, which is Teddy Clare. That incident is under investigation. John Filippi having limped back to the pits. I'm not sure if he'll be continuing. And this is the incident that brought out the safety car. So that'll be a discussion that will go on for a while, I suspect. And the stewards will look back at that after the race. Fingers crossed we should be racing again very shortly. And it'll be Josh Files to control the restart, restart from the head of the field. There's Kajaya, Engstler, Potti, Borkovic. Ah, I spoke too soon. Natan Biel is back in the pits. That steering issue, it would appear, has not been sorted out, and that will be bitterly disappointing. I spoke briefly to Ivan Muller earlier on, and uh, he was very frustrated at the issue that they changed the steering rack, and I said, you must be pleased, though. Pontia TCP3, and he said, not really, I'd be much happier if both my cars were out there and competing. 
So still a couple of cars to recover from that incident. The clock, of course, doesn't stop ticking. So 13 minutes and 40 seconds, plus one lap of this race to go. I'm talking to Josh Files yesterday about his experiences here. Double TCR Germany champion, of course. And he loves it here. It's very much like his home circuit. Um, he was explaining that, yes, it should be a Honda and Audi circuit, but he thought the Hyundai would be strong, and he was right. And we also talked about the weather conditions because the forecast, we arrived on Thursday, and the forecast for today, yesterday, and tomorrow, three days of rain. We got a shower on Thursday night, a shower last night, and apart from that, there hasn't been the forecast rain. And Josh was saying that it's one of those circuits that if the rain is forecast, it may not appear. And if there's rain, ah, now was it contact from Martin Reba that spun Urutia around? And then Jessica had nowhere to go and was pushed into the incident by Claire. And then Comte. I didn't actually see the problem involving Comte, whether he's, ah, yes, you can now see it. It's the front right-hand wheel that's off, so broken steering, broken suspension, potentially on Comte's car. But as I was saying, the, the weather microclimate here, potentially if it does rain and it's meant to clear up, then it could go the other way and the, the clouds stay over the circuit and instead of a shower, you get much heavier rain. This race, though, dry, which wasn't forecast. to everyone's relief. Quickest so far in the few brief laps, the three laps that we had, it was Dusan Borkovic did a 137.266. And uh, to compare that with qualifying pace, Felipe's pole time was 136.575, so seven tenths or so the difference between qualifying pace and race pace. Things, though, potentially could get quicker, should get quicker. And on my timing screen, the incident at turn three, no further action. So one of those things, a racing incident, call it what you will, but there will be no further action, say the race director and the stewards. And so once those cars are removed, we'll be back racing once again with no potential consequences after the race. That's not the same, of course, as uh, the Felipe Paulson incident, which the stewards will, I suspect, be looking at. Whilst we've got a moment, let me just explain the situation regarding the, the corner numbers, the turns. Uh, for a car race, there is no turn two where there would be for a bike race. Basically, off the start and finish line, up the hill, turn right at turn one, then the long, long, long drag up the hill. There's a very slight left-hander, which you'll see on some track maps as turn two, then the square right at turn three, which is where the incident was. Davidovsky on the side of your screen. Martin Reber in the middle, Jessica Beckman on the right, making their way back to the pits. But that's the difference between the two track maps. In case you're wondering, it's either 10 corners or nine, depending on which one you look at. But uh, turn two is the one that uh, confuses people. Let's just take one more look at this. This is Stian Paulson. There he is in the background, up on two wheels after a thump from John Filippi. And Paulson immediately slowing, but we've not seen him since. And this is Brichet through the gravel. And he's also taking no further part in proceedings. The clock, though, still ticking. Under 10 minutes of this race to go. And now this is the incident. You don't quite see... You just about see the tap, I think, from Reba on Arutia. And bang! Jessica appears, pushed into it by Claire A, but nobody at fault, say the race director and the stewards, just a racing incident. And with 
plenty of time before tomorrow's race. Those cars should all be out for race two here at the Red Bull Ring. Lights still on on the safety car, so there will be one more lap. current TCR Middle East, TCR Asia, and TCR Malaysia champion, if my memory serves me correct. Second in TCR Germany. Would dearly love to do something this weekend, but really, those two deleted laps in qualifying. Ah. Gilles Magnus gets a five-second penalty for being out of position on the start line. So, didn't pick up on that but the marshals did, and it's gone back to race control. So car 16, the Audi RS3 LMS of Gilles Magnus from Belgium gets a five second penalty. And Magnus currently down in 14th, so that'll drop him out of the points. There's the confirmation for you. So fingers crossed, the safety car will be coming in this lap and all being well it's between turns five and six six and seven if you prefer that the safety car turns out its lights and indeed confirmation on my screen the safety car will be coming in this lap that's the information that the teams will see and so the radios will be buzzing and Josh Files will then take over as the safety car heads back to its standby position. And it will be Josh Files as Nathan Biel comes back out to try and get this steering problem sorted. And so, clearly, Luca Filippi is going to be right up there with Josh Files. That's the long downhill right-hander at turn three at Schlossgold. And you'll see the lights go out. Then the, the Porsche will head off back to its standby position. Josh Files will then take his time, bunch up the field, let the safety car get away. And then he and only he will decide when to put the hammer down and start this race once again. A frustrating first race, unfortunately, here at the Red Bull Ring. Lots of incidents. But... Uh, a decent cleanup job being done, and there's the sorry spectacle. Nothing looks too badly damaged, so fingers crossed they'll all be out tomorrow. And that looks as though Josh Files has picked his moment, and has he caught Luca Filippi napping? It would appear he has. Through the final corner, Josh Files then takes the green flag and we're racing once again here at the Red Bull Ring. Five and a half minutes just under, plus one lap of this race remaining. Josh Files leads target competition, Hyundai i30N. Luca Filippi second currently, BRC racing Hyundai i30N. And on the left of your screen, that's Dan Lloyd taking a look at the... And indeed, Dan Lloyd goes past... Uh, as you were, Lloyd was already past Kajaya, but it's uh, Lloyd battling with Kajaya. And behind Kajaya, it's Engstler. Flashing his lights in frustration. There's that turn two I was telling you, which on my track map doesn't exist. Turn three, they turn in. And indeed, Engstler has got past Kajaya for fifth place. So three Hyundais still lead this race. Josh Files now pulling out a decent gap over Luca Filippi. Nelson Ponciatisi third, Dan Lloyd fourth, there he is in the Honda. Fifth now is uh, Luca Engstler, sixth David Kajaya, seventh Maxime Potti, eighth is Dusan Borkovic, nine should be Tom Coronel, yes, there he is in the background, and tenth Matto Homola in another of the Snarket competition cars. There is Alex Morgan, P11, just ahead of Gianni Morbidelli in the West Coast Racing Volkswagen Golf. A 
Now, this is going to be telling. Dan Lloyd all over the back of Nelson Ponciatisi. Luca Engstler will want to get up with that battle as well, but is there enough time? Not huge gaps, but comfortable enough for Josh Files and also for Filippi. Not the case for Ponciatisi in third. And Kajaya runs wide. Will that attract the attention of the, the marshals, I wonder? Coming out of turn one. There is Kajaya, Potty. Borkovic, very close attendance is Dusan Borkovic. Tries to go around the outside and shuts the door on Maxim Potty. Dusan Borkovic may have picked his moment beautifully there. Dusan Borkovic takes seventh place away from Maxim Potty in the run up to turn two. Pansia TC2 buys himself a little bit of thinking time, just opening up a slight gap over Dan Lloyd. And Potty runs wide. So Borkovic having made it through into P7. Potty now P8. Coronel P9. P10 is Homola. Then Morgan, Morbidelli, Danny Naj, Andreas Beckman. Uh, Gilles Magnus. And Danny Naj, as I was saying, is just dropping down the order. Oh, big. Puff of smoke from Maxime Potty, and as he's throwing that golf down the hill to try and stay ahead of uh, Tom Coronel. So we should get potentially three more laps. Look at that gap. Josh Files pulling away from Luca Filippi. Ponciatisi once again falling back into the clutches of Dan Lloyd. And Lloyd's another driver who's had a relatively frustrating start to the season. All oh, contact between Dusan, no, Matto Homola and Tom Coronel. And I'm not sure if something's broken in the steering on Coronel's car. And that was also a nudge, I think, from Alex Morgan as uh, Homola came back on. Coronel's still going, but he's lost several places. Right up behind Morgan is Gianni Morbidelli in the number 45 Volkswagen, one of the two West Coast racing cars. Look at that slide from Maxime Potty. And as he comes back on... And where was the tap? Here it is. Contact between the two. And Coronel's car unsettled just avoids Homola as he comes back on. And indeed, they will be crossing the start-finish line very shortly to start the penultimate lap. It's when the leader crosses the start-finish line after the clock has reached zero that we start the final lap, remember. And so there is Josh Files, our race leader. The gap, 1.4 seconds over Luca Filippi. Passiatisi, there he is, Dan Lloyd, fourth. And at the bottom end of the top 10, Homola, Morgan, Morbidelli are 9th, 10th and 11th currently. Lloyd once again having a little look up the inside of Ponciatisi, but no indeed, the French driver holds his ground. I think uh, Lloyd really took encouragement from those two fastest times in free practice yesterday. Really could do with a good result, certainly a podium finish here. Does he have the line? The, the pair move side by side, but I think Ponciatisi has the line for the left-hander. Lloyd cuts back. Oh, Lloyd squeezes through. There wasn't enough room, but Dan made it big enough. So, Dan Lloyd squeezes past Nelson Ponciatisi. We could see it coming, but we didn't know when it was happening. And also, it would appear that Luca Engstler's up alongside. Luca Engstler, though, backs off slightly. And so, Ponciatisi... 
keeps Engstler at bay. So third place changes hands as we start the final lap of this race. Josh Files. The gap has come down ever so slightly. Now 1.2 seconds between Files and Filippi. Dan Lloyd has gone into third. Ponciatisi drops to fourth. Behind Ponciatisi, it's Luca Engstler, another driver who is really, really keen to get whatever he can from this race. Behind Engstler is Kajaya, ahead of Borkovic. Borkovic, too, takes another little look as Engstler flashes his lights. And Engstler just takes a little look up the inside, but Ponciatisi defends. This is... This has the potential of being a really, really good scrap on the final lap. Borkovic wants to move up a place. Oh, sideways goes Ponciatisi as he overcooked it. And Engstler moves up alongside. He has the place, I think. Yes, indeed, Luca Engstler. But Ponciatisi comes back at him. Kajaya is now also into the mix and is lucky, I think, not to tap the back of Engstler's car. I thought this battle would be worth watching on this final lap. Ponciatisi, lucky to get away with that. Ah, shame for Tom Coronel in the pits and no points. In fact, he will be classified as a finisher, but where, I don't know. Something like 19th of the final of the finishers as Josh Files takes the chequered flag Wins the race from Luca Filippi. What's happened behind? Lloyd finishes third, Ponciatisi fourth, Engstler fifth, Borkovic sixth, Kajaya seventh, Potti eighth. Just to round off the <coughs> excuse me point scoring positions, Matto Homola ninth, Morbidelli tenth, excuse me Morgan tenth, Morbidelli eleventh, Andreas Beckerman twelfth, Danny Naj thirteenth, Jimmy Claire fourteenth, Tamas Tenke in the Zengo car finishes fifteenth, <laughs> and you'll excuse my voice having given up after that last lap. What a brilliant, brilliant final lap as uh, Josh Files took the win by nearly 1.2 seconds from Luca Filippi. This was the moment that Dan Lloyd snatched third place away from Nelson Ponciatisi. There wasn't room there, but Dan Lloyd made it just big enough to squeeze through and take the position. And I think Luca Engstler was unlucky to also to, to not get past Ponciatisi and also pick up a place. So... Three target top competition cars in the top nine. Hyundai's first and second. The Honda of Dan Lloyd third. Hyundai's fourth, fifth, and sixth. So five Hyundais in the top six with Files, Felipe, Ponciatisi, Engstler, and Borkovic. Kajaya's Cooper a seventh. Potty's Volkswagen eighth. Another Hyundai, that of Homola, ninth. And Alex Morgan, tenth. That switch to the Cooper having paid off for the Welsh driver. And uh, we're just awaiting the top three to come round into their temporary Park Fermé positions underneath the podium, right opposite from uh, where I'm sitting in the commentary box. Already Luca Filippi is in position. There is Josh Files waving to thank the marshals. Very casual from Josh. And I think um, Luca should be proud of that. I think he's a probably a little disappointed that he couldn't convert pole position into a victory. But um, Josh Files did say that it was all going to be about turn one. And it was the attack into turn one that I think uh, everybody realized was their golden opportunity here at the Red Bull ring. And so into pit lane comes Josh Files. And congratulations from the team for Luca Filippi, for Dan Lloyd and the Brutal Fish team. Podium finish for them. Mixed fortunes, of course, because uh, Martin Reber involved in that incident, which sidelined five other drivers.
but the man of the moment, Josh Files. And uh, I think I know what we're likely to see in a few moments as Josh gets out of the car. <laughs> Gives the throttle a little blip in celebration. There we go. I thought that's what we'd get. And that, remember, is a brand yeah. new car. <laughs> Josh having destroyed the, the car in which he started the season in Spa. And so all sorts of issues. He did manage to race in race two and finished 14th. But uh, the team took delivery of a brand new car from Hyundai Motorsport after Spa. And the only thing was changed was the engine because, of course, he would have picked up another engine change penalty. So it's the engine from race two at Spa, but a brand new car otherwise. A few glitches yesterday, I think it's fair to say. But Josh delighted with that victory. Let's get confirmation of the result then. Race one here at the Red Bull Ring. Josh Files in a Hyundai wins from Luca Filippi. Dan Lloyd third. Nelson Ponciatiti PC fourth. Luca Engstler fifth. Dusan Borkovic sixth. David Kajaya, 7th, Maxime Potty, 8th, Matto Homola, 9th, and Alex Morgan in 10th place. Three British drivers in the top 10. You'll, um, you'll, forgive, you'll forgive a little bit of flag waving. But let's head down to the pit lane and hear from our race winner. Josh Files is talking to Alfredo Filippone. Josh Files, that was a close one, but a nice one. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was all about the start, really. I made a, be a better start than uh, Luca and just got him into turn one. We had a nice fight to turn two, and, you know, I, I know the track really well, so I know exactly where to sort of place the car and defend uh, on the way out of there, and then from there I just got my head down. I think the safety car helped us a little bit because I could feel the tyres were degrading quite quickly at the end, um, but I managed to make a good restart, and, uh, yeah, I'm just so happy because after Spa we had a complete disaster there. Um, you know, the target competition boys had, has got an all-new all car for this weekend. They've prepared it. We had a few teething problems yesterday, but you know what? You know, this is credit to them and thanks to them because to, to qualify second and now take the win is just, it's a remarkable turnaround. So I'm, I'm just over the moon. Well done. Thank you. All the best. Congratulations to Josh Files. And thanks to Alfredo. So what will happen in race two, I wonder? I think um, Josh does have form here at uh, Red Bull Ring of uh, coming from behind. And as a result of that race victory, Josh Files returns to the head of the leaderboard. So he's 12 points now ahead of Julien Brichet after he scored no points. Gilles Magnus drops to third. Aurelien Comte, Matto Homola and Luca Engstler all move up at the expense of Maxime Potti. Andreas Beckman still eighth. Urrutia drops to ninth. And also moving up, Luca Filippi. Surprise, surprise from that second place. So then, let's remind ourselves of some of the highlights of this first race here at the Red Bull Ring. to the podium ceremony then. And so to mark Josh Files victory, the British national anthem. So after his victory in race one at Hockenheim, round three of the series, our second race weekend, 
Josh Files returns to the top step of the podium here at the Red Bull Ring. There is the trophy for finishing first. A delighted Josh Files raises it high. Congratulations, too, for the other podium finishers. Now, I'm not going to take a guess. It's one of the Gumera twins. It's either Marcus. Let's just say it's Marcus, shall we? And if I'm wrong, I'll apologize later. Picking up the team prize for the best, highest placed finishing team. Luca Filippi gets the trophy for finishing second. And Dan Lloyd picks up the trophy for third. So the photograph, please, gentlemen. Maybe it's Andreas Gumera. Maybe it's Marcus. Who knows? And so champagne it is then. No race two to worry about today. So they can be a little more liberal with the champagne than perhaps they normally would be. So then that's confirmation of uh, the result here in the Red Bull ring for our first race weekend of uh, the first race of the, the weekend, excuse me. We've uh, another one, of course, still to come this weekend. And that's just before lunch tomorrow. Our coverage begins at 11.20 Central European time tomorrow. And that'll be for round eight of the series. But we are now at the halfway point of TCR Europe 2019. What an exciting race it was.